Well, hello. In this video, I'm going to cover how to set up and use the Dataverse Fire API. Everything from setting up the initial permissions, enabling the mappings, and using the API. And we'll set that up uh, without having to do any code uh, and start doing this. So without further ado, I'll just start going through the steps. Step one is going to be establishing the permissions. And there are a few things that we do around this. Uh, the first one is to establish an app registration in Azure Active Directory. So I'll go ahead and start that here. I'll choose a new application registration and I'm going to say Fire Integration Video. I'm good to keep the default settings here. I don't have to do any other uh, setup around that. We'll end up using a few different properties from this panel. We'll come back here um, in a little bit uh, to be able to both get the details we need as well as the certificates and secrets that we need as well. So now that we've created the app registration, we're going to move over to the Dataverse uh, uh, Admin Center or the Power Platform Admin Center to be able to work with our, an environment. Um, currently, I have a an environment provision um, and I have the Microsoft Cloud for Healthcare solution deployed to it, specifically the data integration toolkit that is a prerequisite for being able to uh, do what you're going to see here. So what I'll go do is go to the access section and I'm going to go to the S2S applications. Basically we're going to interact programmatically with this environment. Um, so this is where we set that up. I'll choose a new app user. I'll go ahead and add an app. We can see the fire integration video uh, application that we've just set up here. I'll choose the business unit as well as set a security role. Um, now there's a couple of different names that you may see uh, depending on the version of the data integration toolkit that you have deployed. Um, but it'll look something like this, sync admin for fire app reg user. Um, it might start with fire app reg user, something like that. Um, but there will be a security role to those effects. Let's go ahead and create that user. Right, and we are all set from that perspective. So the next thing that we'll want to do from a setup perspective, now that we have kind of the core security components uh, baked out, go into the data integration toolkit app and the in the start page, we can go to the Dataverse Healthcare API, which is what we're doing. Um, we already actually assigned the permissions that we need to here, so we don't need to go through that. I'm gonna, or, uh, uh, but I am going to go into the configure integration settings, just to make sure we have a couple of things set up. One is that I'm going to choose a logging level. I always like to have at least information only, especially as I'm going through the first time, but you can disable entirely or choose the uh, appropriate level um, for kind of where you're at and what kind of troubleshooting you might want to do with a more advanced configuration. Then the next thing we'll do is configure the entity maps that we want to use. For the scope of this video, I'm just going to do a simple patient resource. Um, so I'll go ahead and choose the patient uh, entity map. I'll go ahead, the disable, it's currently disabled. So I'm going to set that to no, so it's not disabled or enabled, if you will. And I'm gonna do that for a couple of other, uh, what are called expansion maps. So when you bring in a patient resource, there are a few things that are tied to that. Uh, so I'll go ahead and filter um, the expansion maps based on patient. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do the same thing. I'm going to set disable to no for these. I'll go ahead and use the, um, uh, the multiple record editor here. Great. Uh, so at this point I have the appropriate entity maps set up so that we can start working with this. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to head over to uh, make.powerapps.com, choose the environment that I'm working in. And as a best practice, I always like working inside of a solution. So I'm gonna go ahead and create uh, fire integration 
demo. I have a publisher that I created before in this video, but you can choose the publisher of your desire. And I'm gonna build all my resources in here so that they're easy for me to work with, identify, uh, and even export and work with in other environments a little bit later. And for this, we're going to start creating some Power Automate flows to interact with the API. Um, so there, you, you know, if you're a developer and you're more comfortable, you know, working with, uh, you know, Postman or building something like a C Sharp or a Java app or whatever, you want to be able to interact with that API. That's fine. Um, for this, I'm going to try to keep it low code in what I'm uh, showing for the demonstration. So I'll go ahead and use uh, Power Automate and a Cloud Flow to be able to do that. So I'll go ahead and create an instant flow. I'm going to use a Power Apps trigger for this. And for my first one, I'm going to say uh, upsert fire bundle to Dataverse. So basically, the it'll either insert if it's a new uh, a new patient or update uh, if it is a um, uh, an existing one. Go ahead and choose the Power Apps trigger. And I'm going to add a few things in here. Uh, the first one is going to be a compose action. And this is going to be the place where I have my um, my fire uh, my fire. Uh, bundle that I just have as a, a starting point for um, you know, what I'm actually going to pass in. So um, this is just kind of a, a variable or a temporary placeholder that's going to have the details of that fire bundle. So I'll go ahead and reflect that name just so I know what it is that's actually in there. And for my fire bundle, um, I'll include a link to a, uh, a gist in GitHub with all the detail that I include here so you don't have to come up with your own fire bundle, but it's just a simple fire bundle for um, a, a patient. I'm including a couple of things like phone number as well as email address, birth date, and so forth. Just enough to be able to you know, have a, a worthwhile demonstration of how this works. All right, so now that we have the fire bundle that we want to send into Dataverse, there are a couple of steps that we'll take. The first one is we need to get permission um, from Dataverse and basically authenticate to work with that. So the first step that we'll use is an HTTP call. So this is the uh, you know how we'll actually interact with that API. Um, to start this, I'm going to use a post to um, uh, to get a, uh, a token or, or a you know, yeah, a, a token that I can use a little bit later on. So the URI that I want to use is actually going to come back from the app registration that I set up. I'll go ahead and use the endpoints, and I want to grab this OAuth 2.0 token endpoint that I'll use there. Um, for headers, there is a header that I want to include, and this is included along with the video as well. Uh, so you can copy paste from there. But it's basically just setting the content type. And then there is detail in the body that I'm going to include here as well, but I'll, I'll build that um, dynamically here um, along with you. So the first thing that I'll add in is a grant type, um, and we're going to be using client credentials. For the client ID, that we're going to go and pull from that app registration again. So you can see the application or client ID. So I'll grab that. Um, the next thing that I want to include in here is the client secret. And for that, we haven't set up the secret yet. Um, so I'll go ahead and do that real time here. Um, Secret management uh, is, you know, and the detail around that is a little beyond the scope of this video. Uh, highly recommend using something like a, a key vault to generate and then store your 
uh, you know, your, your secrets rather than hard coding them into an application like this. Because it's a lightweight demonstration I'm and I'm not using any real world information, it's synthetic data, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put it into the application uh, directly. But again, remember I'm not using a best practice here. Um, you know, so I'm going to say demo API as the description. It's just a name that uh, I'll be able to uh, view and reference later. I'll go ahead and copy that value. If you don't do this right away and store it somewhere, you won't be able to get back to this value later once it's uh, not shown here. Unless you have it in a key vault, it's no longer going to be uh, available for you to be able to find. All right, so I have the client secret now. And the last thing that I want to do is add in the resource. And that is going to be my base URL for the Dataverse environment that I'm using here. So it's that uh, Cloud for Healthcare trial environment that I'd set up. I'll go ahead and go back here, add in the HTTPS, and I've got my uh, URL available for me here. So this, again, give it a little bit of a rename. Uh, this is authenticate to Dataverse so that we'll be able to get a, a token to be able to work with a little bit later. Now in you know working with what we get back, we do have one intermediary step. Um, and for this, I'm going to use another Compose um, to be able to get specifically a part of the, um, the token that's actually coming back. Um, so let me grab the specific thing that I want to have here. All right, so um, I'll use the expression builder. And from here, I'm going to use the outputs from a previous step. And I can use my dynamic content. It should let me use the dynamic content. Um, there it is. Uh, so I'll do the outputs from the Authenticate to Dataverse. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit because I don't want the full body, but I do want my open parentheses there. And I wanna use the body access token. It'll look like this. If I hover over it, I can see the full detail that I have in there. This uh, little image is actually going to change after I've uh, saved and moved away from this page. So if it looks a little different once I've gone through this, that's why it uh, is going to change. Again, I'm just going to name this so I know what I'm working with. And that's going to be my bearer token. And finally, the fun stuff. Uh, let's actually interact with the API now that we have the the security in place to be able to work with it. Um, and for this, I'll use another HTTP call. And for this one, it's going to be a post. The URI is going to be uh, another one where I uh, pull a couple of different things together. So I'll go HTTPS colon slash slash. I'll use that um, that uh, URI uh, could have used a, a variable, I suppose, um, but it, uh, that base uh, Dataverse environment that I'm getting access to here. And then to that, I'm going to add the specific details of the API. So it's calling a specific version of the API, and I want to upsert a bundle. Um, for this, I ha do have a few headers that I want to bring in. So I'll go ahead and add a few of those here. All right. Uh, so a few of those are just static values, the OData max version, OData version, content type, now the authorization is one where I want to bring in that bearer token that I have from the previous step. So as I bring in authorization, I'll go to bearer. 
and I can bring the output of my bearer token step previously. So we can see that I'm getting that uh, bearer token. Now, from here, I can build up the body that I want to have in here. Um, and there's a couple of things that I'll bring in. Uh, one of them is the, uh, the JSON kind of uh, bundle that I want to bring in, the one that I defined up top. So again, I'll use the dynamic content. This time I want to use the fire bundle dynamic content. So it's going to pass in the JSON of whatever I had up top here. And then there's an optional thing for the logging where you can tag any of the uh, upsert requests that you're doing. So good one for troubleshooting. If I want to be able to find this operation again later, I can uh, pick it out of there. You could use a variable for that as well, but I just, I'm going to uh, have fancy tag be the hard coded uh, name of mine as, uh, as we go through this. So I'll go ahead and save. Now I'll go ahead and perform a test. Go ahead and run that. Done. I'll let that zip through. We can actually see the progress going through the steps. So the creation of the fire bundle and authentication uh, steps have uh, you know, completed successfully. It's now going through that HTTP call, calling the actual Dataverse uh, Fire API, sending along the bundle that we had in there. You can see we expanded here. It's got the, the full detail of what had been in there. And then we get a uh, response back saying uh, it completed without errors, review the related logs for addition, additional details, blah, blah, blah. So let's go ahead and jump back over to our data integration toolkit. We can see where that patient resource actually landed in here. So if I switch over to the patient, uh, the healthcare data, I can take a look at the patient's fire view and we can see the corresponding record that I was just working with there. So in this case, let me skinny up a couple of these columns that we were working with, but there's uh, the patient uh, fire ID that we had just sent out there, uh, the you know, full name, address information, mobile phone. If I scroll over a bit, I should see the email that's come through there. Did I miss an email and just not seeing it while I'm, no, there, there it was. It was a little bit earlier on, but all of the, the details that were in that fire bundle are now uh, represented in the, the patient uh, fire view here as I take a look at those. We can see in this environment, I had some other sample data that wasn't coming from uh, the fire API. I don't have a corresponding fire ID to be able to find it, um, but that's okay. So let's go ahead and move on to the last piece of this. We did an upsert of a bundle to Dataverse. Let's go ahead and now uh, retrieve a bundle from Dataverse. Uh, that uh, custom fire API in Dataverse. Instead of creating a complete net new Power Automate flow, I'm just going to save a copy of the one because I'm going to reuse a couple of the, uh, uh, the steps that we had. And it's retrieve fire bundle from Dataverse. There it is. Retrieve fire bundle from Dataverse. <laughs> Found that eventually. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on proactively here so I don't have to come back to the screen. And uh, so a couple of different things that I'm going to update in this one. Instead of composing a fire bundle, 
This time it's going to be a fire query. Um, and this is actually going to be a lot more, uh, a lot more straightforward. Um, if you're um, you know, kind of working with this or looking at it with, uh, with fresh eyes and are unfamiliar with fire, uh, it probably is gonna make a lot more intuitive sense uh, in how you work with this. So I'm just grabbing from another window the details of it. I'm gonna start typing the part I know. And I want it to be patient forward slash. There it is. It's that fire ID. Uh, that I just passed in for the previous patient. Um, we're still going to authenticate to Dataverse in the same way. We're gonna use the bearer token uh, in the same way that we did before. Um, this time for the HTTP call, for the HTTP call, we're not going to do an upsert bundle for this one. This is going to be a retrieve bundle. For this one, we'll keep the uh, all the same headers that we had, but for our body, um, instead of sending in JSON here, this is going to be the fire query. And for that, we can keep the same outputs of the fire query step. Um, so we have the, the same things that are gonna go through. They're gonna uh, set up what that fire query is, authenticate to Dataverse, use the authentication token to be able to make the call. I'll go ahead and test. I'm gonna do a save for me along the way, which is great. Run the flow. You can watch the magic happen here. Authentication took place and HTTP call came back with the details, <coughs> excuse me. Um, here we can see, you know, if you're not if you're not used to reading JSON resources or fire details, <coughs> it's a lot to look at um, and try to you know uh, like visually decompose. Um, but that's exactly what you need if you're trying to interact using the fire specification. So. Uh, that concludes what we're going to go through here uh, of setting up the and using the Dataverse Fire API. Hope this has been helpful. Thanks and have a great day.